Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehoss. As you guys can see, I am in my car because we are about to head over to see a collection, a comic book collection that I'm actually thinking about buying. A uh, little quick preamble of how I got into it. Uh, you know, I got a message on Instagram of a guy local to Los Angeles who said he had a Fantastic Four collection and was looking for buyers. Uh, and he asked me if I happen to know anybody and I mentioned that I might be interested. So uh, I'm gonna go out to his place. And I'm gonna go check out the collection, take you guys with me, see if it's something that uh, we can make happen. Uh, I'll probably just flash cut to us already looking at the collection because uh, you know it's, it's, it's a little bit of a drive, about 40 minutes or so, especially in this uh, Los Angeles traffic. So hopefully this works out. I guess I'll say like, comment, subscribe and uh, Come on with me on the journey and we'll, let's see if uh, this is something that we decide to pick up. Right, guys there we see it loaded it up six short boxes all of fantastic four comics uh, ended up working out we made the deal happen so excited to get this back to my place uh, let's take a look at some of the books and see some of the cool issues that we we're able to pick up we made it back to my place I just unloaded the car got the entire collection set up right here on the dining room table didn't actually have enough space in my office, you know, because I don't normally buy collections like this, but I've been just kind of getting things a little bit organized, trying to familiarize myself with everything. In fact, I, have you guys ever been to this part of my house? I don't think so, right? It's my house, by the way. Um, let me see here. I'm going to, uh, I wanted to show you guys a few things that I thought was pretty interesting. Actually, let me do a little, let me do a little movie magic edit so I can flip the camera around. Okay, this is much better. All right, so uh, we got the entire run starting at 13 right here. I probably pulled out a lot of the key stuff um, already, you know, in some of my behind the scenes video when I was over there. Uh, but I, but I figured that I would do a VO and I didn't, didn't really want to know or didn't know how I wanted to kind of put the video together. So I just kind of thought maybe I'll just, uh, film some stuff, you know, for you guys right here, but you know, very cool book right here. First appearance of the watcher, first appearance of the red ghost as well. I mean, granted some of the stuff, it was, you know, fairly low grade. I think I got a good deal, but like, you know, when, when you're looking at stuff like this, you really have to inspect, you have to know what you're buying because depending on the grade, it could be, you know, drastically different in the value of the collection. So this you can see right here, a lot of these books, while they present nice, um, you can see that this right here did, does have a detached cover. So, uh, you know, that's gonna hurt the value of this pretty significantly. A lot of cool, you know, run books like this. Uh, well, I guess, you know, if you think that this is a cool book, I know a lot of people meme, meme on this cover. But, you know, maybe there's some Speedo fans out there. Got Fantastic Four, Mad Thinker. This is a cool book, in my opinion. This is one that I think is uh, kind of a cool spec. You know, not a cheap book by any means, but the Mad Thinker, uh, definitely an interesting FF villain, if you're into him. You got Fourth Parents of Doctor Doom right here. 
another cool book. I think fourth appearance of Ant-Man as well. So you have a double fourth appearance book. But again, I think this is one, yeah, I did an inspection and I believe the cover is also detached with this one. So while not everything is completely low grade, like I think this right here was like a 3.5. Um, he, he mentioned that he happened to have this already in a slab, uh, but cracked it out because he, he preferred his his books raw. But uh, yeah, First Appearance of Super Scroll, a book that uh, I've always wanted to own, but uh, never actually got around to picking it up for myself. Uh, but definitely a very cool book. You know, maybe we're going to see him later on when we get to uh, Secret Invasion. Uh, just other, more Fantastic Four covers, you know, first Rama Tut, obviously uh, first Molecule Man. This one is actually in pretty, pretty decent shape. Uh, so this is definitely one that I think uh, might have some people who would be interested in a book like this. But uh, Molecule Man, definitely a character that uh, a lot of people think could be, you know, significant to... Uh, uh, the Secret War storyline. A lot of just these, you know, fill books and things like that. Uh, you know, Infant Terrible. Again, you know, when, when you're looking at this collection, trying to price it out, you got to really just focus on well, what are the key issues valued at? You know, what are you going to get for them? Like, what, you know, how, how do you determine the liquid value of the collection? Uh, you know, here you can see, that, while this is a cool book, right? FF25, first, I guess, solo battle between Hulk and Thing. You know, you're missing a chip here. Uh, there might be some staples detached and stuff. So hard to know, right? Like you, you're not going to have time to check every single book. Uh, so you have to kind of just pick out the big keys, determine what the grades are, and then make a judgment call from there. Uh, this is a cool book I think is kind of uh, not talked about a lot. Fantastic Four 26. This is uh, the first meeting, I believe, of the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. And actually, this is the first time that they're all on the cover together. You know, that's kind of a, a, a cool little tidbit. Avengers 5 is the first time in the Avengers title that all the prime Avengers are on a cover together, but that is right there, technically their first cover. And then you have another book like this, first uh, X-Men in Fantastic Four. Or maybe this is their first meeting as well. I uh, can't remember off the top of my head, but FF28. So a lot of cool books like this that, uh, you know, they're not mega keys, but they're definitely... Uh, cool, cool books to have. This is the first cover appearance of Doctor Strange, FF27. Of course, he makes his first appearance in Strange Tales 110, but it wouldn't be until this issue where they would actually put Doctor Strange on the cover. So uh, this makes this book definitely pretty cool. Of course, you have the whole section, this uh, what I call the Inhuman Silver Surfer section, where you got uh, first appearance in Inhumans. I think that this book is interesting and cool simply due to the fact that this is the first appearance of Crystal. I think Crystal is the most compelling character of the Inhumans uh, roster. You know, we always talk about what character is likely to show up in the MCU, what character has uh, cosplay material written all over them. Uh, but I think that Crystal is, or what makes that book cool is Crystal. FF46 right here, first Black Bolt, we all know this book. I mean, not a tremendous amount of value, especially since it's a low grade and he's got a, a Tony Stark beard going on, somebody penciled on that. So uh, that's going to hurt some of the value for that book. But again, you know, a lot of cool books right here. Then again, this one, Fantastic 48, obviously the big money book of the collection. The only problem is, is that uh, I was inspecting this one and actually there was a little piece cut out uh, kind of in the, one of the ad pages. So uh, this probably would get a qualified grade. So that is something you got to look at, you know, you got to inspect the big books like the FF48, inspect the 50, know what you're getting with these. Uh, this one actually turned out to be a decent copy. Another great book right here. Fantastic Four, This Man, This Monster, 51, one of the great storylines. Second Black Panther, I might have already said this, but uh, yeah, he, he didn't have 49 and he didn't have uh, 52 uh, in the collection. Another cool Silver Surfer cover that's just generally pretty desirable. Uh, and then like, you know, other cool books in here in the run. Here's like 72. A lot of people like this book. Actually, I think that this is, this might be one of my favorite Silver Surfer covers. I know Silver Surfer has a ton of great covers, but this Kirby cover might be, might be uh, top three. I, I, what do you guys think? Top, top two, top three, top five. Uh, you got, you know, the Cocoon books right here. But again, these are reader copies. Got a Daredevil appearance, which is always cool. This is a popular book. People just like it for the Kirby cover. Uh, you got more Kirby covers with Galactus. 
I think there's, there's the first Blast Star in there somewhere. I probably already passed it. And then you have some doom, late Doom covers. People like these Doom covers. And then you kind of start to approach uh, Agatha Harkness territory, right? 94. And then I think I might have shown this in some of the digging sections I had. Uh, he had a lot of these kind of early annuals, right? So we have uh, this one right here, Submariner uh, storyline, Origin. I think first Dorma, I believe is who it is. You got this uh, Origin of Doom right here. Again, another book that kind of has a little bit of a spine split situation going on. I think the cover right there is split as well. So while it is cool to have a lot of these books, and while I think, you know, the, I think the price was fair, you know, a lot of this stuff is, generally speaking, lower grade. So, uh, you know, how desirable are they really going to be? This is another cool book right here. First appearance of Psycho Man. Psycho Man, pretty random character, a random villain. And then Fantastic Four Six. We've been talking about this book, First Appearance of Annihilus, another character that has uh, gotten pretty hot coming off the heels of Guardians of the Galaxy. So all cool to see those books. Of course, you guys are familiar with the Silver Age stuff. Uh, but what, what's really cool is, you know, there's a lot of books in FF that, you know, they don't have a tremendous amount of value once you get outside the Silver Age stuff. But there are some cool keys like this right here, first Airwalker, second Airwalker. You got the Heralds of Galactus. Those characters, uh, you know, I'm sure are pretty popular, getting more popular because of the fact that, uh, you know, uh, we all know Galactus is coming. You got this one right here in the back. Uh, this one has been hot, Fantastic Four 211. First appearance of Terax, right? You know, everybody knows Terax, or Terax was kind of announced, soft announced. And then you have some other interesting stuff. This is this is cool to me. When you get to around this section, and you start to get to the John Byrne run. This right here, FF232, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the first issue that was done by John Byrne. And while these books are not particularly valuable, this, I would say, generally speaking, is the you know, the, the creme de la creme of uh, Fantastic Four storytelling. This is what everybody celebrates is when John Byrne uh, started to take this to the next level. I think there are a few key issues that uh, people just like because of the, uh, right here, this one right here, the Fantastic Four 243. This is just that great Galactus appearance or Galactus cover by John Byrne. Just a book that people really like. You got first appearance of uh, Frankie Ray as Nova. So this is another a Herald of Galactus situation. This, uh, this version of Nova actually is, is the, uh, one of the Heralds that I tend to think of when I think of Heralds because uh, uh, the, uh, I think back to Silver Surfer, the Steve Englehart run, and Nova was you know, significant in that. You have other little minor keys like this one, you know, some Franklin Richards stuff. What also is cool is just some of this stuff, you know, again, you've seen these covers many times before, but you know, it's hard to get an appreciation for them until you see them in person. You know, even just this, FF256, this is just a cool Annihilus uh, cover. You know, kind of has the infinity thing going on. And actually, you know, a lot of the stuff is in okay shape. It's not, it's not in bad shape, generally speaking. Uh, this is another cool one, just Galactus and Death. Just a cool cover. You get into the later run. I think this had some keys in here, uh, maybe just a few. Let's see can pull out this one always brings back the member berries the new fantastic four this is like the look at this this is you know they're bringing the ringers right here for this team awesome fantastic four team that is definitely takes me back to uh when i started collecting this right here you know got the first uh, mobius and mobius there you see him right there a book that has fallen off tremendously but uh you know has kind of come back a little bit or starting to come back. You got this one right here. This has been a pretty popular spec for a little while. First appearance of one of the, uh, I think the scrolls, maybe in the Marvels movie. And then you have some other stuff. You know, you have, you have more of the giant size, Fantastic Four, First Tempest. You got uh, Multiple Man right here. I think this is kind of an underrated book. Uh, Tommy Madrix, First Appearance of Multiple Man, Giant Size, Fantastic Four, number four. So you got some cool stuff in there. And then I've, I've been kind of organizing this, which I think is interesting. If you guys know this, FF570, this is the start of the Jonathan Hickman run. So I'd say outside of John Byrne, I think that the Hickman run is probably the second most celebrated uh, 
fantastic for written storyline. I might hold on to some of the stuff just to kind of read it myself because I'm, I'm sort of interested in the story. Then I got this one right here. This is the entire Mark Wade section. You got a, a section like this. This is just the Civil War, you know, section. He, he was a huge Fantastic Four fan. I mean, he just everything Fantastic Four, even all the way up until uh, what you can see right here, like the, even the Dan Slott stuff, right? Uh, the current volume of Fantastic Four. So he even had all of that stuff uh, covered as well. And a lot of this other stuff, Fantastic Four, you know, more of the modern stuff. Um, you have like when Jim, even Jim Lee was writing on the series, Mark Millar was writing on the series. So again, a lot of cool books, a lot of cool stuff, got to process all of this, got to figure out uh, how to kind of offset some of the costs, got to inspect everything, make sure that there's no coupons cut and things of that nature. But uh, there you see it right there, almost an entire run of FF. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that footage of me picking up the collection. I want to sort of end the video here in our normal setup to talk a little bit about the experience, uh, talk about what I actually ended up uh, paying for the collection, and then also sort of recap in case you guys ever find yourselves in a similar situation. Now this, again, was one uh, uh, collection that sort of fell into my lap, so to speak. As I mentioned here on the channel, it's not that I'm against buying collections, it's just that you know I, I'm not actively hunting them uh, because of the amount of work that I know that goes into it for having to sort of uh, sell the collections and offset it and all, all the inventory you're kind of left with, uh, you know, how long you have to sit and sit on certain things. But this was a certain situation where it's like, this guy reached out to me, uh, it was local to my area, which d made the drive like pretty easy. It was all, you know, FF, it was organized, everything was already bagged and boarded, which, you know, that's a whole other thing if you're picking up collections that, you know, you just need to, you know, pull out of like milk crates and stuff and bag and board everything. I mean, that's another cost that you have to think about in terms of like, you know, selling all those books and stuff. So this was a situation that it just made sense uh, for me to do it. Uh, when I got over there, he was a super nice guy. Uh, you know, we had a great conversation. Uh, he was telling me about, you know, his love for Fantastic Four. This is actually the second time he has sold his Fantastic Four collection. He, he mentioned that he put together a run uh, years ago, ended up selling that one put another run together, which is the one that I got and, it, you know, sold it to me. And he even mentioned like, you know, at some point in the future, he thinks that he'll probably put together another FF run. So kind of like a, a sport fishing situation for him. He just kind of uh, felt like it was time to let go of this one and, uh, you know, start again. So when I got over there, I pulled out all the major keys, uh, FF 48s, things like that. And I just spent the time to inspect everything just to understand what the grades were. Uh, obviously going into uh, meeting him, uh, I had an idea of, in my mind of what I thought uh, these major books were worth, you know, just pricing it off of other, you know, eBay and other sales pages and thinking, okay, what is the floor value for a lot of these books in terms of like the grades that, uh, you know, th they actually are. So I put those numbers together in my mind. And then eventually when I discovered that the FF48, uh, although it is a very, very nice presenting copy, um, I would say that this probably would grade out to be maybe a 5.0, maybe a 5.5, five, uh, you know, a 6.0 if you were a, uh, somebody who was a grader who was having a really, really good day, uh, but probably more like a 5.0 or 5.5. Five, five. Uh, but it did have a little coupon cut in the ad page. So obviously that hurts the value. Uh, and when, when I saw that, I was like, okay, the bulk of the money of this collection uh, is probably, you know, hurt by that. But after going back and forth with everything, I ended up buying the collection for $3,300, which I thought was a pretty good price overall. Uh, obviously with numbers like that, I'll probably offload a decent amount of the collection uh, just to kind of help cover the cost. Uh, I might hang on to some things if I can. Uh, some of the other stuff, like, you know, a lot of that Bronze Age stuff, you know, as great as the John Byrne run is, there's not much value in that. So I kind of think to myself, you know, I might just keep this just to enjoy it, just to read it. Uh, or, you know, if there's people out there that are interested in picking up, you know, large story sections, um, of an unbroken run, uh, I'll definitely let go of those things as well. So that was kind of my experience with the collection. Again, a lot of cool books, really, really cool to flip through a lot of the FF books, uh, you know, and then, and then there's some other cool keys, which I didn't uh, show you guys, but you guys know, you know, some of these books right here, FF 112, uh, obviously the cool Hulk and Thing covers and things like that. But again, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool books, probably end up moving some of these you know, as cool as they are, but uh, you know, you gotta offset the cost. But that was my Fantastic Four collection, another fantastic collection being sold in the year of 2023. Mine is probably not as valuable as the one that 
CGC created a custom label for, but I am still happy that I bought it. Anyways, that's all I got. Let me know what you guys think. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content. See you on the next video.